This is episode number 111 of the Homeowner Show. Whether you're DIY or looking to hire, we're here to help you find the best information and options for you and your home. My name is Kevin Hackett, and here with me is Craig Williams. Hello, 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 all of my lovely friends and family out there in the potosphere. Thank you for joining the Homeowner Show. We're glad that you could join us on this very special episode. How you doing, Kev? Man, I am good. It's Monday. <laughs> We're recording. Yeah. For a Tuesday episode. Not tomorrow. Not tomorrow. But um, I'll tell you what's wonderful. Yes. The weather. Oh, dude. It is gorgeous outside. It is so wonderful. So <sighs> I, 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 I was, I, it, it's football season. I've been outside. It is just, I woke up this morning. It was like in the, the low 60s. And around here, that's dang near freezing. Here's, here's, awesome. my, here's my favorite part about it dropping below 70, which it was a good, like, I think it was like 65 degrees this morning. Yeah, it was nice. Oh. So when it, when it drops below 70 here, the, the wasps literally refuse to move off their nest. Oh, and so, like, you can safely approach the nest and mm-hmm. then destroy them. Oh, yeah. I, like, I, I know some people that, like, their favorite thing to do is, like, get up and just, like, crumple them up and with like, their hands yes i've seen people do that oh uh, you're it's not insane. gonna see me do it no i'm not doing it either that, that's, that's just... the stupidest thing i've ever seen in my life <laughs> yeah my my favorite method is a, a lighter and an aerosol <laughs> that's that's my favorite way to do it i've done that with spider webs before which is a little more satisfying because it like it lights all the, oh, the yeah. webbing on fire it's also more dangerous because it. it's usually attached to a house well a lot of uh wasp nests are as well <laughs> <laughs> But you can you can find one out in the out in the wild every yeah. once in a while. Yeah. So. Yep. But what's going on with you, man? Uh, dude, we uh we we put a window in today. A window, like yeah. at, at at your house. Well, I helped my father-in-law do it, and it was a second-story window. Okay. And he had uh, cut a hole in the side of this building, so we're having to attach it from the outside. Interesting. And he almost lost it and fell off the ladder. No, no. I mean, he was so close because I was on the inside holding the window in, and he was out there trying to screw it in. And he was he threw something over his shoulder. When he did, he almost lost his balance. I'm like, like we just put the window in, so like I can't even reach out and grab you. Oh, so I was like, yeah. if he falls, do I like do I stand here and go, are you okay? Yeah. Or do I run down and check on him? I don't know. But good thing he did. He just didn't fall. So well, he, and, and it's your father-in-law, so you got a you got a decision to make. Mm-hmm. Do I like him? Right. Do I not like him? I mean, this is a really good way to to say, "Hey, I loved him." Yeah. It was a tragic accident. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't make it. He didn't make it. Sorry, I, you know. Well, he he also he reminded me. He goes, "You know, you know, Craig, God must really love you." Mm. And I said, "Why is that?" And he goes, "Well, he didn't let me fall off that ladder." He goes, "Because if I fell off that ladder." You'd be left with your mother-in-law all by yourself. <laughs> I did not respond. <laughs> You're a smart man. You're wise. You're wise beyond your looks. I just told him I, I'm, I was certain he loved me. I just didn't know how much. <laughs> <laughs> I think you got a pretty clear picture right there. He's like, I'll do anything to not leave you. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll not fall out of this window right now. That's right. <laughs> That's pretty good. So anyway, we got a we got a cool episode. We're gonna do uh, a, a three a threefer on a this three-fer. one. Threefer, a threefer. That's a first. Yeah. So we've got we've got three new tools that Ryobi just dropped uh, a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, that went out and snagged, and we're gonna we're gonna take a peek at them. Now they, they this is a whole new line that Ryobi's come out with, um, and I think they only have they have five tools in total in this in this new line. Well, um, yeah, that that. I think you're right. There's, they're really, they've got some that you probably don't even realize they've got because I'm looking right now and there's a lot more than that. I mean, I'm, well, I'm, they have a, they have a bunch of tools, but so what we're what we're talking about is the new OnePlus HP brushless. Yeah, uh, and I think the HP they've got the impact, the drill, yep. the the it's not a sawzall, but it's a um, what do they call it? What, is, uh, let's see what it says it here? Reciprocating saw. It's a reciprocating saw. It's like called something. It's like a hacksaw or yeah. something like that. Um, um, Hacksaw. Um, but then they also have like the cutoff tool and then the 90 degree 
drill. Yeah. Or, but I don't know if have they come out with more since then? No, they, they, so they, I'm looking here right now. They, they've got more. Uh, of the brushless, yes. but not the brushless HP. Yeah, HP is the that, new is the newest one. Yeah, that that's that's um, uh, the I, I assume that stands for high power. Or, I assume. Uh, okay. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I'm. I mean, they've got a lot of brushless tools here, but the HP specifically is the newest. And yeah, you're you're right. They've got the that right angle mm -hmm. option, the compact. So ba basically, uh, impact, yeah. three three One. drills, mm -hmm. uh, a cutoff tool, yep, and the hacksaw. Yeah, they, they call it they call it a, a handed reciprocating saw. Yeah. So what, what's interesting about about it is that it's it's weighted really well so that one hand is all you really need. And you can use two with it, but yeah, you I mean because yeah. like, you can, I mean when, if you get it on the video here we yeah oh, with the microphone, <laughs> um, but yeah, so you can you can hold this bad boy with one hand um, and, and, and go after something, but you could put your hand right there on top of it and use it to kind of put, but you don't really don't need to. Right. Um, and, uh, and, and, and we'll get into this a little bit more. I mean, it has all the same functions of the Sawzall. I mean, it takes the same blades. Uh, one of the big differences is all, all, all of the HP tools have a specific angled LED light. Oh yeah, I was actually looking at that a couple of weeks ago, and first of all, it's really bright. Yes, and it is perfectly positioned. Yeah, and uh, on the drills, they're all coming up from the bottom, which doesn't seem intuitive at first until you start using it, and then it's like, oh, like it it actually shines light on what you need to see. Yeah. Um, whereas the other ones, like you could potentially get your finger over it because right. they're like underneath the actual motor of it um, and whatever. So anyway, the three that we've got, we've got the, the the reciprocating saw, the HP reciprocating saw, the HP drill, and then the uh, HP uh, compact. Yeah. And uh, did did we mention the um did we mention the cutoff tool as one of them? Yes. Okay, I couldn't it's, remember. It's like a you... mini circular saw. Yeah. Um, I don't think... It doesn't look like it's big enough to cut a 2 by 4 No, it, it really... I think what it's probably useful for as much as anything is you can trim. Put, yeah, like you put a little, you know, some trim in there, but it also looks like you put like a like a grinder it, yeah, tool looks, in there. You could cut like metal with a yeah. specific blade yeah. and, 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 and things like that. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. keep going. No, that's fine. Um, so what they advertise about these is that uh, the big thing is that they're 30% lighter mm. than their standard tools. Okay. Um, I can sp personally attest to that when it comes to the drill and the uh, the impact. The reciprocating saw, it's it's really, really obvious. I mean, those... those Sawzaws are massive, yeah, and so heavy. And they, well, they just—I mean, they've got—they've got big motors on them. This is—I I would say that this is more than thirty percent less. Yeah, I mean, it, wait. Yeah, it definitely—it definitely doesn't doesn't feel as heavy. And it's the other thing that that I really love about it specifically is the way that it is weighted. Mm -hmm. It it doesn't. A, a lot of times, it's tool heavy. But this one doesn't feel that way. Like the the weight between so so a lot of the weight is kind of in front of your hand. Mm -hmm. So by the time you put the battery on it, which is the back of your hand, it it just really it, it weights itself out really well. Yeah, no, it it, it it's got a good hand feel to it, and it's mm -hmm. it's more of like a, a pistol grip. Yeah. Then the other one, you're kind of at like a ninety degree angle when you're pulling the trigger. This one, you're almost uh, perpendicular. Not perfect, right. parallel to right. where you're cutting when you're pulling the trigger, whereas the other one you're kind of you are perpendicular when you pull that trigger on the other one. Right. Um, so it, anyway, um, but let's 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 kind of go with with the drill. The drill has honestly, it has all the same functions as the big Ryobi brushless. Yeah. Um, well, okay. So one question I've got, I'm I'm looking at it right here, and and I don't think that that you can see it in the camera. It's going to have to be up like by your face. There okay. you go. Yeah. Um, one of the things I'm, I'm curious about my, my Ryobi drills, they have a magnet on them to like, you know, if you want to put like, it like does not have a magnet. Nails. Okay. Yeah. That's one of the things I was wondering about. It's got like 
a, a place to put like nails and um, stuff like that. So, and honestly, where the where the magnet usually would be is where the LED is. I don't right. know if you can see that right there. Yeah. But yep. when you pull it, you can you can actually engage the LED. Yep. We so, can see it, and it stays on once you do that, though. Yeah. So that that again, I don't know how huge of a of an issue that is. I mean, a lot of if you're if you're using this tool for a lot of a, like a big job mm -hmm. the magnet's really pretty useless anyway because you're going to need a pouch you know like a, yeah like a place on, on your tool belt or something to keep all of those and i usually do nails. that anyway i've usually got a tool belt where i've got all my everything else that i need exactly um one of the other big things that i noticed about this one is the the chuck on it actually has a more industrial feel than previous models that i've seen on ryobi uh, some of the other Ryobi metals actually have like a rubber chuck mm -hmm. on it. And this one's all metal. Yeah. Um, and even the, um, the, I forget, the adjustment gauge for the, the drill power on this one actually has a little bit tougher feel on it than, than previous ones. But it also has like a, a smooth uh, rotation to it on the, on the adjustment. Yeah. So I, I've actually got two Ryobi drills. I've got the old blue one. Uh-huh. And then I've got the newer one that's the kind of that yellow color, yellowish green. Yeah. Um, but interestingly enough, the, the chuck on it is completely stuck, and I cannot disengage it. Oh, really? So thankfully, what I've got in there is, um, oh, what's it called? Like a bit receiver? Yes, that. Thing. Okay. Um, and so I'm able to still use it quite frequently, actually. Uh -huh. I can't use it as a drill quite as much unless it's got one of those that's got the the head on it. Um, but this one, you're right. The the metal, the other ones are both plastic, mm -hmm. and and I do think that that could be one of one of the reasons it just failed. Yeah, uh, you know, you get plastic parts in there, they're they're just not going to last as long as the metal parts will. Yeah. So basically, with the drill, you've got your you know your your lock, your you know your in and out feature on the uh -huh. on the drill you got 22 speeds uh variable speed and then a hammer option okay. as well as a uh power differentiation between one and two okay um and uh it's here it's for getting into smaller places it's a much lighter drill i haven't seen any power loss okay uh on, on this drill even though it's smaller even though it's smaller um, and, and, and again, that's, that's the whole, that was the whole point of this whole line coming out is they're like, look, we've, we've got a compact version of our tools that use the same battery, um, that are just as powerful. Um, yeah. And so let's talk about that for a minute. Um, and I do want to come back to the design of this in a minute, but, um, we're using the word brushless mm -hmm. here. Are, are you aware of what that actually means i have no clue okay I, I i would assume that a lot of people don't I, I had to do some some research on it myself because they're marketing this stuff as brushless these days and so it's, it's a big deal in most tool lines right now exactly yeah. so they're they're coming out hey it's brushless so basically a brushless motor um it it adjusts it the the speed the the torque the kind of kind of the the amount of power mm -hmm. that it puts out to match whatever task you're doing. So it, it it's almost intuitive. So, mm -hmm. so it knows if you're driving screws into like a lighter material, like, like pine or something like that. Yeah. It knows that it does not have to work as hard okay. to do that. Um, if you're trying to put it into something that that's more dense, like uh, maybe drywall or, you know, a really nice piece of wood, like mahogany or something like that it uses more power to do that. So the end result winds up being that it manages your battery better. Okay. And so um, it also manages its own internal systems a little bit better. So you're not straining all the time and you're not, or you, you don't get too much power or too little power. You get the right amount of power for the job that you're working on without having to do a lot of adjustment. Mm. So it's a, it's a more intuitive type of, of machine okay so that's what brushless means now i, I do want to go back to the um to the design of that drill uh, it, it shocked me because both of my drills are very uh chuck heavy like they're 
they got, big got like chucks a, on them, yeah. Yeah, and they got like a long nose almost. It's yeah. way out in the front of your hand. And because of that, once you put a bit in there or, you know, of some sort, it, you can't get into some tight spaces. Right. This, a lot of it is is back uh, behind your hand, uh, like on, on top of where like your arm would be. And then the, the chuck area is not... The mm. nose is not that long. Yeah. I mean, it's just really, really well designed, and you can get in, like you said, tight spaces. Uh, you're going to be able to find tight spaces a whole lot easier with that. I, I, I will say, if you're used to being able to stick the chuck into things, mm. you're not going to be able to do that as well. Okay. Because, I mean, like you're going to be stopped basically because the, the, the chuck and the battery are almost, they almost end at exactly the same spot. Okay. I can see that being an issue. Um, and, and so that, that would probably be like my only critique is, is that you can't, there are some spaces that you can't get into. That being said, it, it's a lot easier to maneuver in tight spaces. Yeah, but, but I would think, I mean, that that's without a, a bit in there. Correct, yeah. That's Once you that. put a bit in there. And, and you can get like longer bit receivers. Sure. That, that, you know, to get into those, those kinds of spaces. Yeah, so I, I mean, I think there's ways around it. And, and I can see that as a con, honestly, for me. Not a big one. Not yeah. a big one. Not, not for me either. And, and, and like, I'll, that's an easy transition then uh, to move on to the impact, um, which is this one. Yeah. Um, which, if you look at it, the, the I mean, I, you call it the chuck, I guess, but, like, the, the part that actually receives the, the bit, it's actually behind where mm -hmm. the battery is. Yeah. It's like you're not sticking that in anywhere. No. Um, it, I mean, like it's just for driving screws. Yep. I mean, that's and you know, it's, it's and, and it, it, it can drill too. I mean, like it's really, really actually really good at drilling. Yeah. It, um, so, so some drills are a hammer drill, mm -hmm. and an impact is going to be more like a hammer drill. Correct. Yeah. Than you know, a lot of drills are kind of a two in one as far as that goes. Yeah. And if you've if you've never used an impact, I mean, like one, if you're going to be screwing anything, I highly recommend it. Yeah. Um, just don't overdo Why? it because. Why? It just goes in so much easier. It's yeah. faster. Yeah, because it, um, it, it, it does have the kind of that hammering effect. Yeah. It kind of pulses, right? For sure. Um, and also, like, if you're using, um, like, a hole saw, it's really good with hole saws as well yeah. for the same reason. Yep. It ju it's just going to give you a smoother cut a lot quicker mm -hmm. uh, going going through some denser pieces of wood. Well, like, I think, I think like, you, what you're saying there, the, the denser pieces of wood... There's more resistance, mm -hmm. and again, with the pulsing action of the impact, it, it has more opportunity to kind of to kind of back off and and hit it again. Yeah. So. Yeah, and so again, with this one, you've got the you've got the LED that's on there as well. One of the other things that we haven't talked about yet is they actually did do some updates to the batteries. Okay. Um, and uh, I don't know if this was. All of the Ryobi stuff I've interacted with is a little bit dated, but anyway, uh, it actually has a power indicator LED on the front of the new batteries, and so you can actually see how charged the uh, the batteries are, uh, and it actually uses that LED indicator when it's on the charger. Oh, so okay. the charger no longer has to tell you whether or not the battery is charged. The oh. LED indicator on the front of the battery will let you know. That's awesome. And it's just got a little button right there on the front. I don't know if you can see that. Yep. Um, that'll that'll let you know. Cool. Um, and it kind of yeah, gives that's a, really helpful because it, it kind of lets you know when am I getting close to to needing to change that battery out right or, or not and, and the great thing about lithium is they're they're uh, what do they call them they run they they run until they're completely dead right yeah so uh, it's almost like a run flat tire right like yeah it, it'll still keep going <laughs> <laughs> even though it's flat so and this is this is just a real simple tool and you know forward backward lock in place yep and then that. That just releases and, and locks the uh, the bit into place. Right. So other than that, it's a real simple tool, but it's super, super handy to have around if you don't have one. Yeah. So these two right here actually come in a set, and I think they're running for like $129 right now. Yeah. Uh, at least that was the price I saw at Home Depot last time. And it's not a bad deal because it's you get both these tools and two batteries and the charger and a little carrying bag. And is, is that right? One twenty nine. Well, uh, it, uh, that's probably right. I'm actually currently looking at the Ryobi website. Oh, okay. It's more expensive. It shows one hundred and seventy nine. Okay. But um, that that actually might be. It may. That may be accurate. Yeah, I mean, it, the the actual button you click on to buy it takes you to Home Depot's website. 
So um, it is on Home Depot's website currently 179. 179. But but again, okay. you're getting you're getting two tools, two batteries, right, and a carrying bag, and those batteries are probably each worth a minimum of fifty bucks, but just by themselves. I think these new ones are selling for fifty nine. Yeah. But again, I had the last number wrong. Well, so but, there's a good chance I got that one wrong. But I, either I, way, I mean, the the batteries again. We talked about this on on episode ninety nine. I think it was. Mm-hmm. The batteries are the most expensive part of the tool. Yes. You know that's the that's where all of the brains really are. Well, and if you're interested in, in, in going this route, one with Ryobi, two with the, the HP brushless, and you just don't have any power tools yet, I, I definitely recommend getting the, the drill and the impact as a set. Because yeah. One, because I mean, you're getting two good tools, but you're also getting those two batteries. Right. And I say that because the three other tools that you can get in the in the HP brushless series right now do not come with batteries. Oh, okay. And they're each a hundred bucks a piece. Yeah. Um so like just just this saw alone with no battery was a hundred dollars. Okay. So um but you know you get the battery. But if you but if you have a if you're already invested in Ryobi and you and honestly to me this this is the tool in the set. Yeah. Uh, the the other tool I don't I don't really see the need for that 90 degree angle drill for me. I'm sure yeah. there's people out there that are like, are you crazy? I could use that thing all day long. Right. I don't do what you do. Right. Um, but this one right here is by far the most interesting and cool tool that they, because they haven't had a saw like this before ever. Right. Um, and it's just not exactly like it. For right. sure. It's just such a cool. Yeah. It, it's got a lot of power, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's got a lot of power, but like it's not it's not throwing my hand off at all. Yeah, we were okay. So that's actually one of the things we were talking about. Whenever we were, uh, I was testing it a couple of weeks ago, and I I went from just just holding it in my hand to full throttle, and my hand didn't jerk. It didn't move. Yeah. It, it, which you know, some people would say, oh, well, it doesn't have a lot of power. Nope. It's just really weighted very very well. Yeah. So and, that, and that's a huge deal whenever it comes to tools. I mean, the 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 thing that that is going to be the dangerous part of a tool like this is if you slip or if you you know if you do something with it that it's not intended to do mm-hmm. and you crush something with it because they're very powerful. Having it weighted correctly, it really does make a big difference. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, like the uh, those older uh, sawzaws. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's kind of like getting on a bull. Yeah. I mean, you pull that trigger and it could go all over the place. Oh, yeah. And I mean, like those, you, you those, have to, those saw blades it, are dangerous. It's it's definitely a rough cut saw. Yeah. <laughs> you cannot, you can't cleanly cut through something no. with a sawzall. It is something to simply cut something off with. Yeah. With this one, though, the way it's weighted and the the smoothness of it again it's got that brushless motor so it's going to it's going to feel what you need yeah you know if you if it's cutting through something heavier it's going to use more power um and vice versa so uh, you know i i think it like you said it's kind of a game changer whenever it comes to the way something's designed i i, I don't think there's another tool in its class um that could touch it not not at this price point right uh i mean like milwaukee makes one is it yeah but what what kind of i haven't looked at it mm-hmm. so some you know someone it, it's, show it's, me it's been around for a while but is it designed like this one is as far similar. as so it's weighted similar okay. yeah um uh, and and it, i don't know if they had a patent on the design or right. what but i mean like most people don't know that ryobi and milwaukee are the same company so they probably right. just gave them access yeah um but but yeah, so Milwaukee's had one for a while, and I think theirs is actually a little bit smaller. Okay. Um, and I'm trying to think if theirs is from the 18 volt or the 12 volt line. I don't remember. Um, I know I know they have one in the 12 volt okay, line. Okay, so I'm I'm actually looking at it right now, and it is the 18, the M18. Okay. And so, the design is almost identical. Yeah. And and again, like you said, same parent company. Yeah. You but know. I mean, you're going to pay a lot more for that Milwaukee one. Oh yeah, the the now this, this the, one's a hundred bucks. Yeah, the Milwaukee one I think is. Well, I'm, uh, so I'm looking right now. The Milwaukee, it's one fifty nine, but it shows it comes with a battery. With a battery. So, 
Um, I, I can't find it. Oh, yeah, here, tool only. Well, that's weird. Right there, tool only is 159 So either way, it's more expensive yeah. than the Ryobi one is. So, And that doesn't mean that it's not better. It could very well be better. Right. Um, I've I've seen I, the one I think I've seen used was actually the from the twelve volt line. Okay. Um, uh, and it worked great. What I've seen it used for that I, was a surprising use was for cutting PVC, mm. like big pieces of PVC. Okay. Yeah. I and can see it that. was it was great for that. Yeah. Especially if you're like kind of like a one man operation, you need to cut. <sighs> yeah. Um. You know, is it like because like you know those you can get those PVC cutters, but like they're made for like smaller pieces. Right. You know, once you start getting like inch, inch and a half PVC, you need something a little more substantial. And this really does the trick. Sure. Um. You know, as well as you can, you know, you can use it to cut metal. You can use it to cut wood. You can right. all kinds of stuff. Um. You just gotta have the right blade. Yeah. Um. Well, and 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 whenever you come, whenever it comes to a reciprocating saw, again, you're you're not trying to get the finest cut. You're trying to cut something off. Right. And a lot of times you're trying to do it in a in a in a position <laughs> that's like I need to get over that rafter and into <laughs> that thing. Yeah. Right. And so being able to to do that with one hand safely, I I, I just think it's a again one hand a, is a game changer. It, it's a big game changer. Yeah. So so I'm I'm I'm. I'm super stoked about giving it more field test. I mean, I'm, yeah. I've, I've used it to cut several things already, and I'm, I'm, I love it. Yeah, the other day, uh, we we had a pretty, pretty good-sized limb fall uh, with a storm that came through. I mean, it was probably, I don't know, like three, four inches in diameter, so it was a, mm-hmm. it was a decent size. And, man, like, I, I think my, my chainsaw is just biting the dust. <laughs> it's, a, it's an electric. Uh-huh. It's just not that great. And when I say electric... Not battery powered. Uh, it's cord powered. Right. Uh, which I, it's a decent one for, I mean, it was like the most expensive one with a cord that I could buy at the time. Uh, but uh, as I was cutting it, I was like, man, I wish I had a reciprocating saw right now. Like this, it would be perfect for cutting through something like mm. that. And it probably, this thing would have just like completely <laughs> chewed up the limb that I needed to chew up. So yeah. I wish I had it. I should yeah. have come over. So. <laughs> So anyway, man. I mean, this this. I mean, it's not. There's not much else to say about it other than like I'm I'm excited about the direction Ryobi's going with this. I hope they come out with some more. Yeah. Um. Well, I m- most likely they will. I mean, it, again, whenever it comes to technology, whenever you've got a technology that says you know something like the brushless, what it's doing. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think the price is just going to come down eventually. Yeah. Just keep coming down. And, I mean, because you can pick up their regular reciprocating saw, just the normal Ryobi one reciprocating saw for, like, it's, like, 49 bucks. Yeah. It's super cheap. Yeah. Um, But it's not even close to what this one does. No. So, I think they're just going to continue developing more and more and more. I mean, uh, you, you know, once once they get that that brushless motor into things like a lawnmower, you know, stuff like that. Like, in fact, they've already got it. They've got their lawnmowers, their brushless. Like, yeah. It just makes so much sense. And it's one of the reasons why you can take something that's battery powered and make it more powerful than something that's gas powered. Yeah. So. And more reliable. More reliable. And, and with less, less problems down the future, you know? Oh yeah. I mean, like, and if you're, you know, someone who's, you know, trying to be conscientious about emissions and different things like that, I mean, like, well, there you go. Yep. Uh, I, man, I, I can't tell you the number of times I, I continue to, to see more and more homes using electric lawn equipment. Mm. And I, I remember, you know, like that's five years ago. It was a joke. Oh dude. If you, do you remember seeing people like drag a cord? Yes. And, like, and, and then you, you have that one neighbor that had, Oh, check out my newest one. It's got a battery. Yeah. What's its <laughs> runtime? Man, I can get 22 minutes out of this thing. <laughs> 22 minutes? Like, yeah. <laughs> what, you like go around the perimeter and then like do the rest of it the next day? I mean. I, I, well, it would have been 22 minutes, but the dandelions were thick. <laughs> <laughs> I should have done it a day earlier. Yeah. Ah, so, but yeah, but now, I mean, like there's, they're neck and neck. Yep. So. I agree, and and now they're they're more expensive, mm-hmm. but I'm not putting gas in that thing. Well, yeah, I'm not uh, putting. I mean, it, it's sort of like when you start doing the math on an electric car. I mean, like, yeah, they're more expensive up front, but over time, you're spending a lot less money. Right. Yeah, and and like you said, you're also it's much better for the environment. It's not even close. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I'm I'm a huge fan of these. I'm I'm 
I'm excited you got them. I'm looking forward to trying them out myself. Yeah, I mean, like the the story I was telling you earlier about putting the window in. I mean, that's what we used this afternoon okay. to put the window in. Was with, we were like, hey, let's. Well, and, and like that was the other thing I was going to say is if you go get, um, which is probably the most impressive part to me when it says compact, I just assume it's just as heavy. Oh. Um, and so like, we actually had the old Ryobi Impact I up there with too. us. Yeah. And I went and picked it up and I held it. You know, we had batteries in both of them, same size batteries. Yeah. And I was like, good Lord, this thing is so light. Yeah. And like does the same job. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe a little bit better. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just one, because it's just, it's easier to maneuver. It's right. easier to hold my hand. I mean, I, I was literally hanging it out the side of a building, yeah. just screwing a window in. And you got fatigue that goes along with that sometimes. Yeah. And you know, whenever you're doing that time after time after time, the fatigue really, you know, plays a factor. Yeah, for sure. And, and and I'll tell you the other thing is like my wife has told me before, she's like, I can't really work those tools. They're yeah. too heavy. Yeah. You know, this is a step in the right direction. For sure. For her. You know? Yeah. And I, you know, it's one, you don't have to have as big a tool case to carry them around in. Right. If you do put them all in a bag, it's not going to be as heavy. Right. Um, the, the batteries are the same way, but the batteries are the batteries. Right. So you're not going to be able to get around that. Sure. So all, all in all, man, like this two thumbs up for me. I mean, like if you need, uh, you know, if you have a good set and you're happy with them, great. But like if you're looking to invest in like some new ones, you want to check something out, these are going to be a good option for you. One, they're going to be, they're going to be friendly to your budget, um, but they're also going to perform well. Yeah. Um, now longevity, I don't know. Just got them. Yeah, we'll see. Um, and this is a, this is a new product, a new line, you know, and you, you know, you sort of, you do take a risk. By you know stepping out on the razor's edge with a new product, but you know companies like this have been around long enough. They're going to test their products right. and, and make sure that they're going to you know go go the distance. Sure. Um, and if they don't, you know, well that happens from time to time. Yeah, I, I really don't see that being the case with these right now. I, I mean, well, and I, I I get the I get the sense from a lot of guys that don't like a specific tool line. Like they probably had one that went down. Sure. And I've just never been in the mindset of like, well, that one broke, so that means all the rest of them are crap. Yeah. That's just never been true. Right. You know, and, and so like I'm always willing to give them a, another go. Well, and, and with the number of things that Ryobi has. Yeah. I mean. Something's going to go down. Yeah. I mean, did, <laughs> what did you send me the other day that you were like, they even have that? Uh, one what of them I it? sent you was a Bluetooth pool light show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like what? It's like that's not even a tool, right? I mean, like I guess technically it falls in there because like there's a job site radio. <laughs> I guess if your job site's in the pool and you really need like an LED colored light show underneath the water, yeah, because it's waterproof on top of that. This was yeah, yeah, but it uses the one plus battery, right? It was, it was what? Yeah. Yeah, and, and so like it was like they make that. Yeah, I've sent you some crazy stuff. I can't yeah. remember all of them though. Did like I, anytime I find one, I always send it to Kevin. Yeah. Did I tell you that I that I bought the air compressor? Oh, did you? After after we were talking about it, the, I need the, to borrow that. By the, the air way. pump tool is it is there for pumping up tires or it, is there? It'll for, it'll do whatever. I need to borrow that. Like I, I just you know I bought that excursion uh -huh. and uh, the the tires were low. Yeah. Um, they were like I don't know, I think they were like thirty five pounds of pressure and they needed to be like fifty. Uh -huh. And so I started pumping it up and it pumped them up. Now it, it once it got to like 42 43 mm -hmm. uh, but that now it's got a digital readout on it so it'll tell you exactly how many pounds of pressure you have in it it started to be like look dude <laughs> you, you got almost 45 pounds of pressure that's probably enough <laughs> <laughs> but like but it's also it's got a built-in uh, a place to to put like a a a ball, a ball needle. Okay. And then one of those. It doesn't uh, come with one. No, it does. Oh, it does no, come it does. with one. It comes with that, and it comes with one of the the uh, the nozzles for like if you're airing up, I don't know, like a pool float or something. Oh, like okay. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got that nozzle, and both of them snap in, and so they're they're secured in there. That's and so cool. It's man, it's just like how much was that thing? Like twenty five bucks. Who doesn't need that? I, know, I need everybody. that right now. I mean, you're <laughs> you're going to spend if you, let's say you need a bike pump. Mm -hmm. You're probably going to spend at least ten bucks on that, man. Any any dad out there that has ever blown up some goofy pool toy, exactly. Like I've done that before, and like I feel like I've been punched in the mouth by yep. Rocky Balboa. Well, and, and it's, uh, my cheeks. You're right. Are, it's, yeah. Well, and and you probably look like it too. I, and well, and it'd be an improvement. <laughs> <laughs> but like even I, I even think of like uh, like air mattresses, mm -hmm. like. 
I mean, you got to be next to a plug to to yeah. air those things up because yep. you know if you buy one of those portable you know plugs you know that anyway, this would it would do the job. They so and they have they have another one for those kinds of things too. They do. They do. Um, it's a different kind of inflator. Yeah, it's actually um, it's like an air gun or I something. I think it's actually less expensive <laughs> than that. I think it's like twenty bucks instead of twenty five. I gotta go get one of so, those. Yeah, it's awesome. I'm not gonna lie, it's um, awesome. I've got to, I've got a trailer out in the pasture that the tires are down. I was like, I don't want to drag the air compressor out there. <laughs> you, hey, just I'll let you borrow it. All right. I mean, so. I just need to get off my lazy butt and go get one myself. But, twenty five bucks, man. But you have one. You you, you wasted twenty five bucks today, probably. <laughs> sure. <laughs> it's, it's totally possible. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll let you know how that investment turns out. <laughs> yeah. Well, dude, um, what what did we not talk about that we need to? Anything? I, I mean, I, I, don't, I think we brought up like one downside to these to these tools. <laughs> um, I mean, and really the only downside to it is they're a little, you know, stubby on the nose end. Right. And um, and, and honestly, that may be really good. You know, I, 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 okay, here's here's one. If you're really like ham fisted. Uh, like you might you might inadvertently cover up that led okay but i mean like there's i mean the the number of guys out there that have like that size of a hand yeah are far and few between honestly i mean i I don't have massive hands but my my fingers are good ways away from that that light um did you just say far and few between yes Uh, okay i've always said few and far between far and few between anyway Anyway, i'm just saying no, I'm I'm there. It's right. Okay. <laughs> okay. I've just never said it that way. <laughs> it's okay. We're 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 from Texas, so we're both right. That's right. <laughs> so you provide me with evidence otherwise. <laughs> and it better be pretty good evidence. It has to be really good evidence. <laughs> Um, all right man well listen thanks for buying this so that we could check it out because, of course well um, i mean I, I needed it yeah so. you needed it but so it's good lucky stuff. for you guys yeah, that's right <laughs> um, that's right anything else and i think that's about it uh, it's a short episode today but i think it was good hopefully like it's funny hopefully these days when we're saying like short episodes 40 minutes i know <laughs> i know well it's because mel and christy took us two hours yeah we did between them and tacus the, you know, four episodes that took us four hours to, to do. Kevin, we're just that interesting to talk to. I guess. Yeah. I guess. So. We, we fool a lot of people, which is good. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, thanks for downloading this episode. Yeah. We're glad. But not you. you. <laughs> not you, loyal no. listener. <laughs> yeah, you, you're you're not the fool. You're so smart and loving and caring. <laughs> we're so glad you're here with us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, thanks for downloading. We hope you enjoyed the episode uh feel free to give us a like feel free to uh you know subscribe all those things leave us a rating review we would love that and we're here every tuesday so thanks for being with us until next time we'll see you later see you